ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد the topic that i will be speaking about today is at-tawbah repentance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he created us and the way that he made us is that we will fall into shortcomings we will we'll do mistakes in our lives we will error however strong that we are and however weak we are it doesn't matter however strong your iman is and however weak your iman is you're going to do shortcomings this is something that's going to happen to every single one of us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says الذين يجتنبون كبائر الاثم والفواحش الا اللمم ان ربك واسع المغفره الله سيز ان ذاس الذين ذا وانز يجتنبون they abstain from يجتنبون كبائر الاثم they stay away from the major sins so this ayah shows us that the believers are the ones who stay away from major sins والفواحش and they stay away from and they stay away from zina and then Allah says, look in the ayah, الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَأَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ Lemam means major, minor sins. This is something that believers will fall into. And then Allah reminds us at the end of the ayah, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ وَاسِعُ الْمَغْفِرَةِ Your Lord, He's forgiven, is vast. However much mistakes that you fall into, Allah is always open to accept your what? Repentance. وَلِذَلِكَ the scholars, they say, Your sins can never be more than Allah's forgiveness. Your sins can never be bigger and greater than the forgiveness of your Lord. Allah, the Prophet وسلم, he said in a hadith, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi narrated in his Sunan, and Ibn Majah and Darimi, and Sheikh Al Bani rahimahullah graded this hadith to be Hassan, which is, Kullu Bani Adam, all of the children of Adam are khata. Khata means what? They wrongdoers, they come with shortcomings. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ The best of those who do mistakes, the best of those who error, the best who the, of those who do shortcomings is who? التوابون. Those who repent. This is where you underline the hadith. The Prophet said, وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التوابون. The best of the sinners. So Allah, the Prophet called us a what? Sinners. The best of those sinners is what? The one who what? Who repents. Who asks Allah for forgiveness subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every one of us has to every day re renew this concept of repentance from time to time. Brothers, repentance is the path of success. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is greater than each and every one of us who we believe he's ma'asum, meaning he is infallible. The Prophet ﷺ is free from mistakes and errors. Ma'adhalika, what would he say? He said, Wallahi, he swore by Allah. And the Prophet doesn't have to swear by Allah for, for us to believe him, right brothers? We would believe him without him having to say Wallahi. We would believe him. But imagine if he swore by Allah, it becomes greater, right? It becomes more serious to us. The Prophet said, Wallahi, by Allah I swear, inni la astaghfirullah. I ask Allah for forgiveness. وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ And I repent to him. Scholars, they said, okay, pay, stop here. The Prophet distinguished between istighfar and tawbah. They're two different things. That the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Wallahi, by Allah, I swear, إِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ I ask Allah for forgiveness. وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ And I repent to him. They're two different things. Istighfar and tawbah is two different things. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنُ تَيْمِ What he did was, he wrote a book on that. He wrote a book to distinguish between the two and explain which each one means. We won't go into that now. And look what the Prophet then said. وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ I repent to Allah فِي الْيَوْمِ Every day أَكْثَرَ مِنْ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً More than 70 times. And another narration he said مِئَةَ مَرَّةً A hundred times. So it's more than 70. So how much is it then? A hundred. إِذَا النَّبِيُّ اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ 
he asks Allah for forgiveness and repents to Allah, turns back to his Lord how many times a day? More than 70, a hundred times. Al Agar ibn Yasir al Maziniyu, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, is a companion. He said, Ya ayyuhan nasu, the Prophet said this. He said that the Prophet said, Ya ayyuhan nasu, O people, tawbu ila Allah, he repent to Allah. Wastaghfiruhu and ask him for forgiveness. Fa inni atubu fil yawmi mi'ata marrah. I ask Allah forgiveness every single day a hundred times. So these two narrations, what do they do to each other? They explain each other. 70 times, more, more than 70 times the Prophet asks for forgiveness. The other narration tells us how many times? A hundred times. Here the question lies, brothers. Which is, is it every repentance? Or is there a specific type of repentance? There's a repentance that Allah mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. What does tawbatan nasuha mean? What does tawbatan nasuha mean? Because this ayah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, those of you who believe, tubu ila, tubu ila Allahi, repent to Allah, tawbatan nasuha, a repentance which is nasuh. What does tawbatan nasuha mean? We'll explain that later, inshaAllah ta'ala. At the ending of the lecture, we will speak about that, inshallah. In another ayah, Allah says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah says in this ayah, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ People repent to Allah. جَمِيعًا All of you. This ayah, it's for everybody. If you're high, if you're a scholar, if you're a student, if you're a person on the street, it doesn't matter. The, hadith say, the ayah says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ O believers. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ You're going to attain from your repentance success and prosperity. And then repentance is not specific to what brothers? Repentance is not specific to the sinner. It's not specific to the one who commits crimes and the one who comes with sins. It's not. Rather it's for every believer because look what the ayah says وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of you أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ believers does it mean that it's only for the sinners? No, it becomes more for the one who knows he sins. But even the other believer, why does he have to repent? Because there are some sins that might come from you that you don't know. You might do mistakes, shortcomings and errors that you're unaware of. Allah is happy subhanahu wa ta'ala when a slave repents. And the happiness of Allah is greater as the Prophet told us, than if one of you was in the middle of the desert, and you had a riding beast and on top of that riding beast you placed your food your nutrition drink everything your, your, your life say your life is on top of that riding beast and guess what somehow you lose that riding beast you give up on life because everything is on there in the middle of the desert if you go this direction it's going to take you weeks the other direction is going to take you weeks the other direction is going to take you weeks it's going to take you weeks the only way you could get to wherever you want to get to is on the riding beast. You've lost it now. You don't know where it is. How would you feel? You would get ready for death. You would get ready for what? Death. Then once you give up, guess what? You find your riding beast on top of your head standing next to you. How happy would you be if you find it? Huh? The Prophet told us that the repentance when you come with it is more joyful to Allah than the feeling that person feels at that particular moment. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Lallahu afrahu bi abdihi Allah is more happier for the repentance of his slave Hina yatubu ilayhi when he repents to his Lord. Min ahadikum Then if one of you was Kana ala rahilati bi ardin falatin If one of you was in a land which was open, a desert Fan falatat minhu then the riding beast ran away from you, or escaped from you, or you lost it. وَعَلَيْهَا طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ And your drink and your food and everything is on it. فَأَيْأَسَ مِنْهَا And you gave up. You gave up. You don't ever believe it's going to come back. Then you came under a tree, you slept. فَالضَّجَعَ فِي ظِلِّهَا فَأَتَى شَجَرَةً فَالضَّجَعَ فِي ظِلِّهَا He went to a tree, he slept under it, giving up on life, thinking, you know what, I'm going to die. وَقَدْ أَيْأَسَ مِنْ رَاحِلَتِي فَيْبَيْنَمَا As you're like that هُوَ كَذَلِكَ إِذَا هُوَ بِهَا قَائِمَةً Your riding beast is right next to your head standing فَأَخَذَ بِخِطَامِهَا بِخِطَامِهَا You grab your riding beast from the front 
Thumma qala, then the slave says, so happy, he grabs his riding beast, he doesn't want to lose it. And then he says the following, Thumma qala min shiddati al-farahi, due to your excessive happiness, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuk, akhta'a min shiddati al-farah. That that slave becomes so happy, he says to Allah, you are my slave and I'm your Lord. He gets it wrong because he's so happy. That feeling that that slave feels at that particular moment is nothing compared to how Allah feels when you repent to him. Allah loves his slave to come back to him. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah wants to take your repentance. Allah wants to forgive you subhanahu wa ta'ala. The repentance brothers, it carries on. It's open until the day you're about to die. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, on the authority of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the hadith is found in Sahih Muslim. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَبُصُطُ يَدَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ Allah opens his hand subhanahu wa ta'ala daytime. لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيءَ النَّهَارِ At night time, Allah opens his hands to forgive those who've done the crimes daytime. وَيَبُصُطُ يَدَهُ بِالنَّهَارِ And daytime, Allah opens his hands لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيءَ اللَّيْلِ To forgive the ones who did sin at night time. Allah does this حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا Until the sun rises from the opposite direction. From the east. Until the sun comes from the east where it doesn't come out from. Allah will what? Uh, is it the east or the west? The west, the west. Until the sun comes out from the, the west. Allah will always do that for you subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet he said in the hadith Abu Hurairah narrated, Sahih Muslim, Man taaba qabla an tatlu'a shamsu min maghribiha, taaba Allahu alayhi. Anyone who repents before the sun comes out from the west, Allah forgives them. The repentance is open. Also the person, before he dies, and before the death reaches the person's throat, Allah will forgive. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ الْعَبْدِ Allah accepts the repentance of a slave مَا لَمْ يُغَرْغِرْ As long as the death doesn't reach what? His jugular veins. Before he doesn't. At this point, if you repent, it won't be accepted. مَا لَمْ يُغَرْغِرْ So you have the chance to ask for forgiveness before that. Brothers, it doesn't matter how great your sin is and how big it is. Allah is always open to accept it from you. The Prophet ﷺ told us the hadith that Abi Sa'id al Khudri narrated, and the hadith is found in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. That there was a man, كان في من كان قبلكم. Before you there was a man. رجل قتل تسعة وتسعين نفسا. This man killed ninety nine people. Not one, not two, not three. Ninety nine people who took their lives. This is called a serial killer, right? He's a murderer. He killed 99 people. فَسَأَلَ He asked an أَعْلَمِ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ He asked the most knowledgeable person. He requested and he said, I want the most... the most... Uh, knowledgeable person. فَدُلَّ عَلَى رَاهِبٍ He was then pointed towards a monk. They showed him a monk who was a worshipper. فَأَتَاهُ He came to him. فَقَالَ He said to him, إِنَّهُ قَتَلَ They told the monk, إِنَّهُ قَتَلَ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ نَفْسًا This man, he killed 99 people. This, was, this is what they told the monk. The monk is a worshipper, the one who cuts off from everybody else. He lives inside a, uh, a little uh, ha. He, he has a little ha place he stays in. And he doesn't come out, he doesn't meet people. So they told him, what is it called in English, the place that he stays in? Tapestry. Huh? Tapestry. A tapestry. A tapestry. So he stays there and he remains there. He doesn't come out. Even sometimes they say his food and what he wants to eat is brought to him. And the monks at those times, what they used to do is they would have a rope that dangled from the roof. They wouldn't have a staircase for people to come up to them. And the rope would be with them. So whenever they wanted to come down, they could come down. And guess what? When they, went, when they wanted to go up, they could go up because the rope is down. But then once they go up, they take their rope and they put it in. So no one can come up. No one can meet them. There's no way to get to them. So they took him to a monk like this. When they took him to the monk, the monk said to, they asked the monk, they told the monk, this man killed 99 people. And so he said to him, he's a monk, he's a worshipper. So he saw this to be very great. So he said, This man killed 99 people. 
After, this is after they asked him, he killed 99 and he wants repentance. And then he said, no, Allah doesn't forgive a person like this. This is a killer. He said, Allah doesn't forgive. Oh. He took his sword out and he made him a hundred. He killed the monk. Now he killed 99 and he killed the monk, a worshipper. This man's a serious killer. فقتله فكمل به مئة. He completed a hundred on him. ثم سأل ثم سأل and then he asked عن أعلم أهل الأرض فدل على رجل عالم. Brothers, ponder here. This man was shown a monk. A monk is not a person of knowledge. Are we all together? And if we combine two hadith, we take a benefit from it. That the ignorant person he kills others and he kills himself. Because this ignorant one he killed himself. He was the cause of his own death. Because he gave a fatwa, a verdict that was wrong. So he was the cause of his own death. And we have another hadith, hadith Abi Sa'id al Khudri, the same. Same companion narrated it. Of the companions giving a verdict that was wrong, and that verdict killed what? Another person. They gave a wrong verdict. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Qataluhu qatalahum Allah. They killed him, may Allah kill them. Why didn't they ask if they, if they didn't know? And then the Prophet said, فَإِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ السؤال. The cure to ignorance is questioning. So when you speak with no knowledge, you do not only affect yourself, but you could also affect another person. Because your verdict could probably kill a person. It could what? It could kill a person. You could say to a person, no, no, you have to, because this man, he had a wound on his head and it was bleeding. And he said, I can't shower with water. It's too cold and it will kill me. I have a big wound. And the companions believe if there is water there and the water is what? It's present. There's no other way out. You have to use the water for wudu and for ghusl because he had major impurity. He had a wet dream. That's what the companions believed. So what happened? They told him, no, no, you have to use the water. Is there, is there water here? Yes. Water is not missing, right? Use the water. They didn't know that if you can't use the water, it's also the same. You don't have to use it. So they, he used the water and it killed him. And he died from that. So the problem here was that the person who was asked the question was what? A monk. So he became the reason of his own death. So then they, he asked for a person of knowledge. He said, I don't want a monk. I want a person of knowledge. So they went and they showed him a scholar. فقال, he to, they told him, This man killed a hundred. No, no. Sorry, this man killed a hundred. Because now he added the extra one. He killed a hundred. Does this man have repentance? فقال, he said, Naam. He does. The scholar knows the scripts. He knows everything. Don't judge a person based on how they worship Allah, if they cry, if they weep, if they... All of this is not what, what qualifies a person to be a scholar. Are you with me, brothers? Because the scholar knows, understands, he has ilm, rusukh, he's grounded. So he said to him, yes, he has repentance. Look how powerful his knowledge was. But he said something else to him. He said, in taliq ila ardi kada wa kada. But he realized that this man, even though he wants to repent, and the repentance is accepted, he realized that this man can't repent whilst he's here. Brothers, benefit from this. He realized in order for this man to be serious, he has to leave the land. Brothers, are we all together? He said to him, انطلق إلى أرض كذا وكذا Go to the land so and so. فإن بها أناسا Because there are people يعبدون الله تعالى who worship Allah. In that land that I'm telling you to go to, there are worshippers who are worshipping Allah. فعبد الله معهم Worship Allah with them. Brothers, when you want to repent, you can't say, I repent and I'm with the wrong people. Are we all together, brothers? This man, when, he's, when the alim said to him, yes, your repentance is accepted. But he said, leave now. He didn't just say, leave the people. He, said, he told him to leave the land. He said, leave that land that you're in right now. And go to the land, so and so. Why? Because there are people who worship Allah. So what, what would that benefit? The benefit that will benefit is You are upon the religion of the person you're with. The people, the people that you're with have an effect on you. Brothers, 
if you take something that smells bad and you place it next to a for example you in your fridge you put something that smells bad inside the fridge and you put something else in there would it smell from the other things if you put a, a, a cup of water inside the fridge after it and it smells of onion when you take it out and you drink the water can you smell onion from the water yes that smell will affect the water when it's not really touching the water but because they're in the same place the smell will go towards the water that's the same the people that you're with and you're around will have that effect on you you will start picking up their traits and the way that they are and look what he said to him and do not come to this land for verily this land is an evil land he told him this so the person has to learn and understand this point which is the sign of repentance is that you turn away from the people that you're with the people that you're hanging around with the man he straight away because the hadith, hadith mentions فَانْطَلَقَ فَانْطَلَقَ means brothers what? he left the fact here brothers it shows a sur'ah it shows that it was fast and it was quick and he followed the command of the scholar straight away but brothers pay attention to this if he had not followed that command quickly he would not have made it to where he made it to which will later benefit him are we all together brothers? He listened to the scholar. When the scholar said, said to him, Go, hatta idha nasafa atahu al -mawtu. Death came to him. The man died before he could reach the land that the scholar told him to get to. But what did he do? Did he follow the command set by the scholar? He followed it straight away. But listen, he died and he never made it to the place. So the angels, they fought. Because remember, his repentance was only considered when he fully left the land. But he hasn't left. He's still in the evil land. The two angels, the angels that are, uh, their job is to deal with the mercy of Allah, they're here. And the ones that are meant to deal with Allah's punishment are also here. They're arguing. He's ours. No, he's ours. This is where the argument is. The way that the judgment was done was, the angels who were who was dealing with Allah's mercy, they said, This man, he turned to Allah. He repented. He ran to his Lord. He wanted to gain Allah's forgiveness. The angels that were, their job was to deal with the punishment of Allah, they said, This man never done any good. He has not put forward any good. All he has done is repented. He came. He hasn't done any actions yet. فَأَتَاهُمْ مَلَكٌ فِي صُورَةٍ آدَمِي Then an angel came to them in the form of a human. فَجَعَلُوهُ بَيْنَهُمْ أَيْ حَكَمًا He placed, he placed between them a حَكَم. فَقَالَ He said, قِيسُوا مَا بَيْنَ الْأَرَضَيْنِ الْأَرَضِينَ أَمَا الْأَرْضَيْنِ قِيسُوا means measure each of those two lands. فَإِلَىٰ أَيَّتِهِمَا Whichever of those two lands Whichever of those land in which he's more in, then he's of that land. So they did it, they measured the land, they realized that he was what? The land in which he wanted to go to the land of mercy was more closer to that. <coughs> so he got it in time. The angels of mercy, they took him. <coughs> Some of the narrations mentioned, no, he wasn't. But Allah made the land closer towards that direction. And Ibn al-Qayyim mentions the reason why Allah made the earth move in his favor was because the part of the hadith where it says, He came to his Lord Allah in repentance from his heart. So even that though his actions let him down, the person gets a reward based on their what? Of in their intention. He really meant it. He really wanted this. This hadith is one of the most powerful hadith, most powerful hadith in this regard. Now I want to speak about inshaAllah ta'ala the conditions that come regarding repentance. 
Shurutu qabul tawbah The conditions of acceptance of repentance, brothers. For a person to repent, there are three conditions. This is the shurut and the conditions that a person has to come with. The first one is anil ma'asiyah. Leave the sin. The minute you repent, you leave the sin. Brothers, leaving the sin, it means you leave every single thing that would lead you to it as well. So for example, if it's brothers and people that you're hanging around that's making you do these wrong things, for you to leave the sin doesn't mean you just don't sell drugs, but you also stay away from the people who are, who are influencing you. So the first condition is, You stay away from the sin, and that whichever, whatever will lead you to it. If a person is addicted to watching haram things online, then they have to get rid of the things that are making them watch it. If it's your phone, it's, if it's your laptop, if it's your computer, whatever is leading you to it, you have to get rid of it. If you don't, you're not coming with the repentance that's needed from you. So the first condition is, <coughs> The person has to leave off the sin and anything that's leading to it. The second one is, The person has to regret this sin whenever they remember it. The Prophet said in the hadith, النَّدَمُ tawbah." Repent, regret is what? Is repentance. Whenever you remember it, you cry, you become emotional. How would I do that? What? It will hurt you a lot. Whenever you remember of what you did, and what you said, and how you did it, it hurts you. Sometimes some people, brothers, they will converse about it. They will talk about it. They will laugh about it. They would even make a joke about it. The person who really regrets that sin will never talk about it. Brothers, pay attention. If you murdered somebody, would you ever talk about it? If you, yeah, you killed somebody, would you ever tell anyone? Yeah, even if you repented? Even if you didn't repent, would you talk about it? Why? Because you know it's something serious and you don't want to get caught and put behind bars, right? Are we all together, brothers? So why is it that when you do zina or you steal or you talk about it and you converse about it, you shouldn't? The third one is al-azm, a decision you have to make. Allah ya'uda ilayha that you never go back to this again. You have to make a decision in your heart that this sin that you did, you're never going to do it again. I am never going to go back for that, and I'm never going to do it. It has happened once, but it won't happen again. Um, that's all if it's sins that you do between you and Allah. But if it's a right of a person and you did something to somebody, you've got their rights, you took something from them, then what you have to do is what? If it's connected to somebody's rights, then what is needed is, there's a fourth thing, which is You have to free yourself from the oppression that you did. Whatever it, the human's rights, you. Whatever it is, if you insulted somebody, you name called them, you have to take for forgiveness from them. These are the three conditions. If these three conditions are found and they are present, this is called tawbah, which is nasuha. Ya amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. This is tawbah nasuha. That's what it means. If one of those are missing from you, then your repentance is gone. I'm going to finally conclude aqsamu ta'ibina. The people who repent, how many types are they? The people who repent are four types. Are we all together? I will leave off the athar al walid al salaf, the statements that have been transmitted from the salaf, we'll leave that inshallah. We'll take Q&A after this. But the four types of the people who repent. The first type is al-tabaqatil ula. This is the first type that the people are. The first one is أَنْ يَتُوبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ The person repents to Allah. وَيَسْتَقِيمَ عَلَى التَّوْبَةِ And the person is steadfast upon the repentance إِلَىٰ آخِرِ لَحْظَةِ مِنْ حَيَاتِهِ Till the last moments of his life in this world. He's steadfast. He did a sin, he walks away from it and he will never fall into it again. Of course, as we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us in a way to commit minor sins. Huh? الذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش إلا اللمم 
Istithna here means that lamam, which is minus sins, will occur from the person. We said the hadith before, Kullu ibn Adami khatta' wa khayrul khatta'een at-tawabuna. That all of the children of Adam are what? They're sinners. So everyone's going to fall into some mistake, some shortcomings, some errors. Like if this person has stayed away from the major sins, and this person is steadfast. This person, of course, is what? A sabiq ilal khayrat. He's a person who's gone forward in good. <coughs> Are we all together, brothers? A person who, uh, an example today that we saw today that take, took place, is one brother who recently died from cancer. You guys probably heard of Brother Ali Banat, who died. Ghafar Allahu lana wa lahu. May Allah forgive him and for us and shower his never-ending mercy onto him and us. But he's an example of this kind of category, insha'Allah. And we're basing it on what's apparent to us. We don't praise anyone in front of Allah. Allah knows everybody what they truly are. But what it seemed apparent to us is that brother walked away from everything that he was. And he repented to Allah and he became steadfast until his last moments. صح? That's what it seemed to us. The second brothers is a person, he repented. He took the path of repentance. But this person is steadfast upon the ummahatu ta'ah. He is steadfast upon the comprehensive obligations. The ummahatu ta'ah means the oblig obligatory things. He doesn't fall short on obliga oblig obligatory things. And this individual stays away from al-fawahish, zina. He also stays away from major sins. But he's short in what? He's short in also falling into the sins. The sins. He's got some sins here and there that he cannot let go of. That will come to him every now and then. But he's not doing it intentionally. He's not willing to do it. But there's a weakness in him. This is what the ayah means. That's, this ayah is talking about that person. He's falling into the minor sins. No, this person is not falling into major sins. Like in this person, he's falling into it consistently. But it's not because he wants it. He cries every time he remembers. The third person is, he repents, he's steadfast upon that repentance for a short time. Then his desires overcome him. His desires, they overcome him. And then he stands up and he does the sins intentionally because he can't control himself. His shahwa has power over him. Allah says in that Quran, وَآخَرُونَ اَعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا These people, they've mixed up the good with the evil. This is what this ayah is. This ayah is talking about this tabaka of people, or this type of people. وَآخَرُونَ اَعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ They accept that they have sins. But look what they do. خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا The good that they've done, they mixed it up. وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا Another shortcomings that they do is mixed with it. And then Allah says, Asa Allahu an yatuba. Alayhim, Allah will forgive them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth and the last one is, the person repents. And then he's consistent upon his repentance for a period of time. Then he goes back to the sin without ever repenting again. And he's consistent upon the sins again. He repented, he's good for a period of time. Then he falls into the deep end with the sins and he doesn't come back. Brothers, the best of people is the one whose life is long and he fills it up with obedience. The Prophet ﷺ said to us when he was asked, Ayyun nasi khayr? Who is the best of people? The Prophet وسلم, he said, Man tala umruhu wa hasun amaluh. The best of people are those who what? Tala umruhu, his life is long. He lived for 100 years. And he perfected his actions. And the Prophet was then asked, Who is the worst of people? 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man tala umuruhu, anyone whose life is long and wasaa amaluhu, his actions are evil." Walidarika, repentance is something that we need to come with. It's from the things that will allow us to come back to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Anything which I have said that was wrong is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.